As Canadians come to terms with recent attacks on home soil, it's raised a question more often asked about other parts of the world. It's a search for balance between ensuring our safety and security while respecting our right to privacy. Canada's spy agency, CSIS, says between 130 and 145 Canadians have gone overseas to take part in battles waged by the extremist group ISIS. Many of them have since returned to Canada. The RCMP has said there are about 90 people in Canada on a watch list of suspected extremists. CSIS has an annual budget of about $513 million and add that to that the budget of Communications Security Establishment Canada or CSEC, the agency that monitors phone calls and data. Its annual budget is $440 million this year. Despite nearly a billion dollars going to those two agencies, plus the combined law enforcement of provincial police and foreign partners, some worry it is still not enough. At a Senate hearing earlier this month, Jeff Jaworski, CISA's Deputy Director of Operations, said, I'd be foolhardy to say we have all the bases covered. We do what we can with the budget that we have. The attacks in Ottawa and Quebec could lead to calls for greater funding. It may also prompt a move for expanded security powers, something that worried critics even before these two tragedies. Last week, Green Party leader Elizabeth May said, mention terrorists and ISIS and many people will want to tear down civil liberties. But if the laws can invade the privacy and rights of any Canadian citizen, it's more worrying. She added, once we give up our rights and liberties, it is very hard to get them back. So as Canada considers the balance between security and privacy, we'll also consider the cost, financial and otherwise. The last word on this goes to Rudyard Griffiths. And this, of course, all comes, this horror and tragedy and terror, as a bill goes before Parliament about expanding CISA's powers. Now, expanding, doing things they already do, but that put them in slight legal gray areas. So this would really just codify those behaviors to let them, mm -hmm. uh, to, to let them monitor people, for instance, in ways that they already do. Uh, is it, do you do you hear what Elizabeth May saying? When would you agree at all that you know that the right to express oneself and our civil liberties uh, should not be impeded, mm -hmm. even if it means it, it keeps us a little behind the eight ball with the, the bad guys? Well, in the heat of yesterday, I think there is a danger, uh, in a sense, a rush into much stricter legislation. Now, you could say that's warranted. These 90 individuals are in the country right now. We don't necessarily know exactly what threat they pose at this moment. But I, I do share a concern with Elizabeth May that CSIS and CSEC both are far less uh, regulated in terms of democratic oversight, let's say even than their counterparts in the United States. So I, what I'd like to see is more power for these institutions potentially but let's get real uh, oversight, real legislative oversight in place so that we're not doing what the Americans did after September 11, which really, I think, damaged their democracy for almost a decade in yeah. terms of just handing power over willingly well, to the, the security the, services. The problem with this debate, of course, is that there is a techni technological ability to monitor citizens. It does exist now. We now know that uh, various levels of various governments may or may not be tracking our phone calls, tracking our movements. Uh, I think most people in a post 9-11 world would say some degree of that is reasonable, right? In the same way that we don't get irate about taking our shoes off at the airport, we understand that this is a price we pay because we want to get the bad guys as well. I guess the question we have to ask is, where do we draw the line? And I don't think actually burdening these groups with more regulation and more oversight is the answer. What I would say is, let's focus the attention a little bit. If you know there are 90, are you spending time on another 3,000 that maybe you shouldn't be focused on? Uh, in the same way that Israeli airport screening is much more targeted right. well, than two, we do it. Two comments about that. I mean, you have to find the needle in the haystack. So you, you actually have to build the haystack. And that's what a lot of this electronic surveillance is. And I think it does have a chilling effect if people think that their conversations are being monitored, even if they're necessarily not, or they think the government has the power to do that. And I think we have to be very careful about how that affects our democracy, how it affects our, our the agree. openness yeah. of our society. Second, when you actually get to these individuals and what is, could potentially be in this legislation that is will soon be before the House of Commons, you're talking about things like preventative detention. You're talking about allowing but CSIS Roger, informants. You're, we're not talking about. We're not talking about you. We're not talking about saying we think Roger's the bad guy. He said something on his Facebook page. Let's throw him in jail. We're talking about somebody who went to Syria and right. came back, 
or we know from various stated objectives on social media and elsewhere that they plan to go to fight right. in uh, in Syria or Libya or anywhere mm -hmm. else. Though to me, there you do get in, you put yourself in a position where your liberties might get curtailed. Yeah, but I mean, Amanda, we either live in a democracy where people's uh, citizens' rights are the same, or we don't. And then if you're going to have certain people who don't share the rights that you and I share, you have to come up with a pretty darn good system yeah. to prove guilt and not to assume guilt because uh, again they're, they're talking about allowing CSIS informants to not have to appear at trial to face their uh, the people that they've made the accusation against. What I will say is I agree a hundred percent with the principle that you're expressing. I believe in it. I wish mm -hmm. that we could live that way. It feels today on this day this week maybe hard to live up to. Well, you know, again, it's it's a, a danger, I think, that this legislation is unfolding in the backdrop of what happened yesterday. If there's a cooling off period, that might be good for everybody.